we're going to start with some basics of CNC and CAM setup. Uh, by no means are we going to be an expert by the end of this particular exercise, but at least this will give you a pathway to start taking a model and bringing it to the machine, simulating it, playing around, and then you know adjusting as you need. Um, I put together this CNC speeds and feeds cheat sheet. Uh, so and we'll refer to this throughout the video, just so you have some idea of some of the vocabulary we use. If I talk about RPM, that's going to be the spindle speed, so the revolutions per minute, how fast that bit is spinning in the router. If we're talking about surface feet per minute, that's how far we're traveling. So if we take the one point on the bit and move it in a linear fashion while it's spinning, it should make a corkscrew shape, and that will be our surface feet per minute. The feed rate is just that linear speed, so moving from x0 to x1, that feed speed that it goes from that point to this point is the feed rate. Our diameter of the tool is very important. Um, the number of flutes is going to be also really important because depending on how many flutes you have, we can take out certain materials. So the speed of the router bit spinning, the amount of material taken out, the uh, speed at which it's engaging into the material and the hardness of the material all will determine how we're cutting. The chip load is an important number that is generally given to you by the manufacturer of whatever router bit and mill um, you're using. So we can reverse calculate a lot of this stuff. Uh, we're going to be using HSM uh, with SolidWorks and that, that's a package that can be used with Inventor and Fusion 360 as well. This particular package will do some of these calculations for us, but as you're inputting some of the values, this will enable you to, to sort of see what's going on in the background. Um, if we do want to calculate the RPMs, we can just take our surface feet per minute, multiply by our 12, and then we're going to divide by pi times the diameter, because that's going to be that kind of corkscrew um, shape. So that will give us the RPMs necessary for running this bit. We don't want to go too fast. It'll burn in wood. If we go too slow, we won't be able to pull enough uh, chips out fast enough. Uh, we can do the same for um, uh, metric, the so surface meters per minute here. Okay, And this, this simplifies this equation up here. If we want to calculate the feed rate, we can take the RPM if we know it multiply it times the number of flutes, and then multiply that time the given chip load uh, from the manufacturer. And then the, the same deal here for in metric, it's usually called feed per revolution. Okay. This should help us sort of get started on some of the basics. Again, we're looking at diameter of the tool, the material we're using, the number of flutes uh, cutting teeth on the end mill or router bit. Uh, the diameter of that tool, and then the speeds that we're moving the machine. If all of this seems fairly foreign, that's okay. We move over, I'll pull up just a, a standard data sheet. This is a pretty popular company, OnThread. They make machines and bits and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, I pulled up their data sheets for all of their bits, which you can find online. So you can do a little searching for one of their bits, pick the bit you're looking for, and then I chose plywood here just because that might be part of our example. And look, they have the same formulas down here. So if you're looking to do some calculations, and if you look, they give you that chip load. So if we're looking at a 3 uh bit, we can find the number here, so 6307 and then the 6300s right there and it's looking for ah the 3 8 bit it's going to be 0 0.022 to 0 0.024 is going to be our chip load on a 3 8 bit so we would use that number i would try to go towards the smaller number so that we're taking out a smaller chip and then we can work our way up from there but if we can fit within that range and we know we're using the tool very appropriately. 
It, the same is true for, uh, I use a lot of these Lakeshore carbide quarter inch variable flute 3N. So if we're cutting something out of aluminum, ideally the project that we're working on will be in aluminum once we get everything right. And you can see on this site, they give you basic information. And if you go to their technical resources, it pulls up all their types. And if you choose the uh, aluminum speeds and feeds, you get actually the surface feet. And then you can back calculate that. Okay, so they give you a good amount of surface feet here, 200 to 2000 surface feet. And then they give you the chip load right here. Okay, same, same deal. We're doing a profile, we can do the whole tool diameter, and then if you're slotting, they suggest doing half the tool diameter. We'll try to stick mostly to half the tool. So if we're using that same three, three eighths or quarter inch is pretty popular. We'll, we'll want about three thousandths of an inch per tooth. Okay. To get started with all of this, before you open up SolidWorks, use HSM Works. And we'll load that in the background and that should pull up SOLIDWORKS. That way when it's loading, it's not trying to look for that uh, plugin and it should just load SOLIDWORKS straight up for you. If you open up SOLIDWORKS without opening up HSM Works, then sometimes you get an error. So just, just double check to make sure everything is working appropriately. You may need to exit out of SOLIDWORKS if you've opened it recently and then restart HSM Works and make sure your education license is signed in. Hopefully everything loaded for you. You can now open up your parts and we can go through some of the stuff in HSM. I'm gonna open up the uh, CNC hold down that we were working on. This is a really good time to look at the parameters and make sure that everything is working the way you want it to. I'm gonna go over to tools equations and i just want to double check most of the things we're just going to do a profile cut of this part right now and it looks about where i want it to be so i'll hit okay as we rotate our part we're going to cut this out of rectangular stock and we're just going to cut this shape out here in a few passes just to sort of get the process started once you've loaded your part you should roll all the way over to this tab that's cam notice how there's a solidworks cam and a cam the plain cam is hsm works so if everything's working correctly you should be able to pull this up here we need to create a setup for this and then we also need to start adding our tools before we can even process if you look at your toolbar, you have a few different options and you can pull up some of the other tools. Cam manager. So let's let's put our tool in here. We'll go to tool library and we're just going to create a new tool. We're in our document and we'll go down to the bottom and we'll say new mill tool. This is where we can start inputting all of our information. Uh, about the tool. So for our general, we're just going to keep it as tool one. We're only using one tool for this. And then if the program has an offset, you need to know that it references that tool. Okay. This tool is high speed steel for now, carbide. And here we can enter some of the description of the tool. And this is where I actually like to go back to the company's website and copy and paste this stuff. So now I can put in that, any comments I would like, I can put in the, the vendor and you can actually just copy the, the website if you want and the product ID, you can put in the part number and this is a good way to make sure you're using that exact tool. Okay, for coolant, we're gonna use mist coolant. The cutter, now we're gonna enter in all of those uh, dimensions that we had asked. If you go back, notice that this is just general information about the tool. 
Now we're gonna put in the dimensions of the actual tool. So we have a whole bunch of types. We're using a flat end mill. And let's start with the diameter. We know that it is a quarter inch, so we'll enter 0.25. A lot of these are right here. Our flute length, that's going to be one. Our shank diameter, quarter inch, right there. And then the overall length of the tool is 2.5, so make sure that adjusts. Some of these other measurements we can get from the actual tool. In this case, the body length and the shoulder length don't matter because they're gonna be absorbed since the whole tool is quarter inch, there's no shoulder. Let's go to the shaft. We could add in a shaft that would hold this tool, but we're gonna skip that for now. For the holder, we can go back and select. We're using an ER20 collet, so we can add one in a little later. You can create your own holder geometry if you'd like. For feeds and speeds, this is where we get into a lot of those calculations. The spindle that we're using on the router table is 8,000 to 24,000 RPMs. So we have a lot of room to, to cut here. If we look over at the cheat sheet from uh, Lakeshore Carbide, and we're using a quarter inch end mill, we want about three thousandths of an inch per tooth. So that's gonna sit between our, I'm sorry, in the aluminum, and that's sitting between 200 and 2,000 surface feet per minute. If we go back to our surface, um, our, our speeds and feeds cheat sheet, you can see that surface feet per minute is listed here, and we can gain our RPMs by figuring that out backwards. So we know that our surface feed per minute is going to be somewhere in this 200 to 2,000 range. And we can divide that by the diameter of the tool. So let's start by going back to SolidWorks and HSM. And for our feed per tooth, let's enter in exactly that number, 0 0.0003. And if you look, it automatically gives us cutting feed rate based on our surface feed here. This surface speed is on the lower end of the spectrum. So what if we enter 200, which is the lowest it gives you? That means that our feed per tooth, now if we bring it back to 0.03, it gives us a slower cutting feed rate and it keeps our spindle speed about 3000. Since we've got a pretty fast spindle, we can ramp this up. So we're gonna bring up our surface uh, speed here to about a thousand. And then again, we'll bring that feed per tooth to 0 0.003. And if you notice, we can cut at 15,000 and that allows us to cut at a feed rate of 137 inches a minute. That's really fast. So we're gonna slow this way down to make sure that we're successful. Since I've played with these tools a lot, we're gonna bring our feed per tooth down to 0 0.001. So it's gonna take off a little bit less. For our surface speed, let's bring that down to the lower end of the spectrum. We'll go a little above. Our spindle speed here is now going to be at least 8,000. That's our lower end of the spectrum. And for our cutting feed rate, Let's bring that into 13 inches a minute. You can keep playing with these values until you get something that you, that you really like. Uh, I'll bring this up to about 12,000 and bring this down to 13. And we get pretty low but fast surface speed here. So you can see that you can really manipulate a lot of these things very quickly. I think something like this will look pretty good. We can adjust since the router is a little faster than the mill. Uh, this gives us room to cut a lot faster. On the CNC mill, I would cut it about 13 inches a minute uh, to be safe. Here we're spinning uh, almost three times, two and a half times as fast. So we can take off a lot more um, chips per tooth. 
we'll keep our ramp pretty slow. That way we don't fully engage in the part. And our plunge is gonna be how fast it comes down into the part on the Z axis. And we'll do the same thing. We'll take off 0.01. We have three flutes on this tool. And we've just done everything we need to basically set up this tool. Feel free to adjust some of these, but make sure that your feed per tooth is lower than 0.003 and that your surface speed is within 200 to 2000 and our spindle speed sits within 8000 and 24000. We'll hit OK and now we've got our tool that we can select. We'll hit OK and we know that we've got a tool in our library now.